beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray Luther's morning prayer together. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things, let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Now let's confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hello, St. John's. Welcome to chapel. My name is Mr. Yoakum, and I am leading our chapel message today. And so I'm going to read to you our scripture verse today. Now, our theme for the school year is in all things. And that is the same theme as the National Youth Gathering theme. But we take it from two different scripture verses. So I'm going to read to you the one that we use for the National Youth Gathering. And this is from Colossians chapter 1. It says, For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile himself to all things. This is the word of the Lord.
So we just read our scripture verse a minute ago, and it came from Colossians chapter 1. And there's a verse I really would like to focus on. It comes from verse 17. It says this, And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Now I was thinking about this verse because it has been a crazy year. It's been a crazy couple of years. And sometimes it feels like maybe things are just falling apart. We know there's lots of things going on in the world. We know the, this pandemic has been an inconvenience for a lot of different reasons. Um, there's been a lot of things that have been kind of hard to deal with. And so it reminded me of uh, a couple things. And I wanted to try something out. So I need a volunteer from the crowd. You look good, come here. So here's my volunteer. I have a box of ping pong balls. Ping pong balls aren't very heavy. They're actually kind of easy to deal with. In fact, it's probably harder to hit them straight and do things with them than it is to carry them around. Now, I don't have a whole lot in this box. Do you think you can hold them all? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's try it out. Let's see how many. That was a big mess, wasn't it? That was a lot of ping pong balls that went everywhere. It's life can feel that way sometimes, can it? I mean, we look around and see what's going on, and you wonder, is the world coming apart? We have hurricanes, we have wars, we have a pandemic, we have all kinds of other things going on, and sometimes it just feels like, can life stay together? And maybe at home we might feel that way too, or in school wondering, I can't get enough work in to get good grades. I, I'm struggling to understand this, or I'm not doing great at my sport anymore. Or maybe relationships, our friendships are having some troubles. It can feel like the world's coming apart, can it? And the truth is, we can't hold much, of, if anything, together. We really can't. We don't have that power and strength like we think we should or maybe hope that we could. And so it provides a little stress and, and confusion for our life. It reminds me of the children of Israel. And I'm going back to a time where they were slaves in Egypt. Maybe you remember this Bible story. See, they, they were in Egypt and they had become slaves to the Egyptians and God raised up Moses to be a leader, to lead his people out of Egypt. And so he sent Moses in. And no matter what Moses did, it seemed like it just made things worse. I think even Moses maybe even questioned, what's the point of this? Can I even fix this? It seems like the world might be coming apart. But God stepped in in every one of those moments. We know the rest of the story, right? Moses said, 
God commands you, Pharaoh, to let my people go worship me. And Pharaoh said, no. And so God sent a plague. And Pharaoh asked for, for relief from that. And then Moses said, let God's people go worship him. And again, Pharaoh said no. And it was this habit back and forth, back and forth of let my people go. And Pharaoh saying no. And then God sending a plague. And then Pharaoh saying, please give us relief. I'll let them go. And Pharaoh changed his mind. This had to be a big stress for God's people watching this back and forth, back and forth. Is God going to do anything? And finally, Pharaoh lets them go. And they make their way out, and, and they're given all these possessions, and they have their families back, because as slaves, they had nothing. They weren't even allowed to be a family. And now they had all these things. And so on their way, they're marching out to the sea, and they get there, and Pharaoh changes his mind one more time and sends out his army to get them. And the people of Israel start to panic, wondering, What's going on? Will we survive this? Life is coming apart. We just got life together, and now it's coming apart. But God steps in, and he, he inserts himself as a pillar of fire and cloud between the Egyptians and the Israelites. And then he tells the people, be patient, wait. And after that wait, God parted the sea through Moses and gave them a way out. A way they didn't see in the midst of that hardship, that fear, and the mess of the world that they were feeling. And so they were brought through safely. You see, sometimes when our world feels like it's a crazy mess, God is telling us, wait, I'm going to provide a way out. Don't worry, I have all the pieces together in my hand. I Hold it all together. Fast forward in time to Jesus' time, and we know that it's Jesus that really brings us and holds us together. You see, back in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve sinned in this perfect world that was all held together, and sin brought death and destruction and disease. And a lot of other stuff. And the people probably wondered, is it all going to come apart? But God gave them a promise in the midst of that, saying, I will hold it together and I'll provide a way so that it never comes apart again. And that promise, of course, was Jesus. And when we look forward to Jesus, we see that he is a man who walks among us, reminding us that God has always had it together. He's always held all things together, even when our lives feel like they're falling apart, when we're dropping every ping pong ball everywhere. Try as hard as we may, we can't carry it all or hold it all together. But through Jesus, through Jesus, it happens. You see, God gives us this promise that through Jesus, one day, none of it will ever come apart again or feel like it comes apart. You see, in heaven, we'll have this perfect place to live that will always be perfect and nothing will feel like it's coming apart or falling apart. And we'll know that it's all held together by God through Jesus. You see, when we have those moments in our life that we struggle it's hard to see where God is holding it together. And we just recognize where we can't hold it together. Again, whether that's at school or sports or relationships, home, or maybe just simply what's going on in the world. But we have a God who loves us so much that he holds it together through Jesus because he took that mess to the cross so that we can inherit that perfect world one day. It's a great message for us. It's a comfort, isn't it? To know that even amidst this time that we don't have to worry or fear. But you know what? Not everybody knows that. Not everybody understands that God holds it all together. 
Some people believe they have to hold it all together. And sometimes we believe that lie that we can hold it all together. And so we need to hear that message, that reminder that it's in Jesus, through Jesus, all things hold together. And friends and family who might be struggling with things need to hear that message too, that you're right, you can't hold it all together. And it's okay because God, through Jesus, holds it all together. So as you go through this school year, as you finish this week, Remember in those times that it seems like things might be falling apart or things are difficult and you're wondering, is there going to be a way out of this? But yes, there is. His name is Jesus. May you remember that he holds all things together and that you don't have to. Let's pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for being a God who's created everything from the biggest, most amazing things in the universe to the very tiny, unseen things. You hold it all together, the big and the tiny. Nothing comes undone in your, in your care. Remind us that in those moments that we feel like things are coming apart, that we can't do anything, that you have done it all through Jesus. You have restored and given us a hope for a life where things will never come apart. May we also share that message with others, that they too may have that same hope and that same relief and see that same way out of those tough times. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we will continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his presence and give you peace. Amen. Easter morning.